Kravitz. Welcome to Capital Gang. I'm Al Hunt with Mark Shields, Robert Novak, and Mona Charon. Our guest is White House Communications Director George Stephanopoulos. George, it's good to have you back. Good to be here, Al. Particularly this week. Yes, sir. President Clinton began the week by telling Americans the outcome of his effort to avoid higher taxes on the middle class. I've worked harder than I've ever worked in my life to meet that goal, but I can't because the deficit has increased so much. Two nights later, <clears throat> as wildly enthusiastic Democrats cheered, the president was upbeat about his program. It seeks to earn the trust of the American people by paying for these plans first with cuts in government waste and efficiency, second with cuts, not gimmicks, in government spending, and by fairness for a change in the way additional burdens are borne. Seated in the place of honor next to the First Lady was Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, who yesterday delivered the verdict of the Central Bank. And the President is to be commended for placing on the table for active debate the issue of our burgeoning structural budget deficit. Leaving aside the specific details, it is a serious proposal. Bob, in your income bracket, you're a frontline soldier in this war on uh, shared <laughs> sacrifice. Yes. But if it's good enough for Dr. Greenspan, is it good enough for you? Well, maybe if George had invited me to sit on the other side of Mrs. Clinton, it, it, it might have been. But uh, seriously, uh, a lot of people uh, don't understand central bankese. Uh, Mr. Greenspan was not endorsing this plan. He was just saying, uh, with a double talk to central bankers use, he was saying the minimum things about it. Uh, he couldn't say anything, uh, anything less about it. The, the truth is, I can't believe that Alan Greenspan believes that a program in, in a weak economy to increase the taxes not just on on rich people those, those not the, just the millionaires in the clinton cabinet but the people who are out there as entrepreneurs as individual businessmen really i believe this has the capacity and the capability of contracting the economy but you know a lot of a lot of uh, liberals who are very unhappy with president clinton are delighted because this is they're surprised this is a classic liberal program high taxes on the rich, defense spending, and new liberal spending programs. Mark, Bob's worried about the average American out there. They're the ones that are been, really going to get hit by this. Been about the, he's worried about the average American. I think uh, George showed good judgment. Mrs. Clinton will probably do anything to help her husband's program pass, but sitting next to Novak for an entire evening is probably <laughs> what anybody ought to have to do. The, but the candidate, Al, that we called the people in this panel Slick Willie, uh, with his carefully calibrated message to assuage and mollify every constituency during the campaign, certainly shattered that image last Wednesday night. I mean, he, he spoke the, 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 he spread the ugly truth to the American people about our situation. If, in fact, Bob's supply side uh, deficits were allowed to build until the end of this century, we're talking about $650 billion annual deficits. We're talking about 20% of our gross domestic product going to health care. We're talking about 22 cents out of every dollar going to, uh, to interest on the national debt. Bill Clinton stepped up to it. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he deserves our credit. And the most important thing he did, and the best for politics and everybody who cares about America ought to applaud him for, he said, I seek responsibility and I welcome it. And that's what he did with that plan, and uh, it, it can be improved, sure. But uh, he did something terribly important. Mona, let me ask you a question about the taxes. Conservatives, of which you are a distinguished opinion uh, molder, uh, say that a 40%, that increasing the, the top rate to 40% will stymie growth. And yet you celebrate 1982 to 1986 a, a period of great growth when the top rate was 50 percent. Why is it going to stymie when the top rate is 10 points lower than it was back then? Part of the answer is trajectory, but the rest of the answer trajectory. is, that is whether the taxes are, are seen to be going up or seen to be going down. Uh, when People were enthusiastic during the Reagan years because we had come out of a period under Carter when the top rate was 70 percent. So there was a sense of, wow, we're going to be able to keep a little bit more of what we earn, and that's what a lot of people forget when they talk about the rich, is that they actually earn their money. But, uh, but in any case, this, this program is so full of gimmicks, smoke and mirrors, and Darwin-esque uh, illusory cuts that I can't believe people are taking it so seriously. The fact is, all of the taxes and the spending cuts in defense come immediately. But the so-called spending cuts are scheduled for down the road. And guess what? Down the road will never come. This plan, if enacted, will mean the deficit goes up. George, I want you to answer that because I think there is a sense that you bit the bullet on taxes, but not so much on spending. Well, that's just not true. I have here the list. 150 specific, specific spending cuts, 
Nobody else has come up with a plan. He's got $250 billion in Let's spending read him cuts. Let's read He's actually. leading the spending cuts, and we see a lot of criticism from the Republicans saying smoke and mirrors. This is the most credible budget that's been presented in 12 years. It's been, he's using the CBO, the conservative projections of growth, and he's also got a pro-business slant in the program. What Bob won't tell you is that there's going to be a targeted investment tax credit, that there's going to be a small business tax credit for entrepreneurs who want to invest over the long haul in new businesses. He's looking, the president is looking to create growth in this, in this economy, to create jobs, and he's serious about spending cuts. What we don't hear from any of the critics of the package is, where are your spending cuts? Well, we're gonna, we're like we have come up to the table with your well, Wouldn't a really bold plan have done something bolder about mandatory spending? <laughs> I think that the president has called for close to $90 billion in entitlement controls. He's also called for specific cuts in non-defense non discretionary programs, 150 specific cuts on top of the entitlement cuts. This is as much as anybody has gone for Bob, a long, long time. Get the, pro the problem is on, on, on the question of select, Mark, that when you put, this is, a, this is an old federal uh, spending accounting procedure that they inherited from President Reagan, but when you say that an increase in the Social Security tax on the people who are just going to make over $25,000, old people, uh, when you're going to increase their social tax on Social Security and you call that a spending cut, when you put fees in and you're calling a spending cut, Really, the only spending cuts in the short run out of all this are on defense. What are you doing on the Rural Electrification Administration? You're not really cutting, you're just trimming a little bit really on, on the interest rate. Money. But, but, the, but the point is that what you, the idea, George, is you have to admit, it just isn't, it isn't uh, kosher to say that you have not gone into any kind of uh, tax increase till you've done the spending cuts. Give you the tax last, increase went uh, first. Let me give George the last word on that. Well, the budget is going to contain spending cuts as well as the tax increases. The president isn't going to sign any budget that doesn't include the spending cuts and the tax increases. And that's where the rubber hits the road. Let me just say one thing about why people are taking it seriously. I talked to uh, Bob's Kissing cousin James Carville this week who said that if there's if there's reincarnation he used to want to come back as a president of the United States or the Pope or a 400 baseball hitter now he says I want to come back as a bond market because you can intimidate and dominate everyone the bond markets Bob reacted very favorably this week and on that it note was a, it was George a bond rally. and the gang will be back with the selling of the Clinton program <laughs> Capital Gang is brought to you by GE. From plastics to financial services, we bring good things to life. Yes, I have a question about the GE CF6-6 jet engine. If I wanted to engage the cold water tap into the ice maker, do I first light up an entire city block so I can design a plastic panel to withstand the impact of a 34-pound turkey? Or should I first twist the head 16 degrees counterclockwise to allow enough light for people to see Giovanni Marchese sing like a large elephant stuck in a dishwasher? GE has a simple way to answer some of our customers' toughest questions. Answer Center. One number gets you in touch with answers and information on any of GE's 250,000 products. Because like everything GE makes, whether it be a jet engine or a refrigerator, GE stands behind it. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And 365 days a year. So there's only one call to make the next time you have a question like... How quickly can a space maker microwave... Travel from Chicago to New Orleans. I'll be glad to help you with that. Wonderful. Terrific. Thanks. Excellent. Cool. If you're printing to the LPT-1, try printing to the LPT-1C colon backslash windows. Backslash. The device command in this example sets up the H-I-M. Oops. What? what did I do? I don't know. H99. What did you do it? You've been fooling with that thing for three days now. It's making it easy to use. So we'll be more productive. If it's productive, much longer we'll go out of business. If you want a computer that's easy to use, there's still only one way to go. Tonight, he calls the Clinton economic proposals a good start, but thinks it's smart to wait and see. Presidential candidate turned White House watchdog Ross Perot on CNN's Both Sides with Jesse Jackson, 9 p.m. Eastern tonight. Welcome back. Echoes of cheery members of Congress had barely subsided when President Clinton was on the road selling this program and laying down the gauntlet to Republicans, starting in St. Louis. I've already heard some people on the other side of the aisle say, well, he should have cut more. And my answer is, show me where, but be specific. No hot air, show me where, and be specific. 
The Clinton tour continued with a town meeting in Chillicothe, Ohio, then up to FDR country in Hyde Park, New York. The CNN Time poll shows approval for the overall program, 62 to 27, but reservations about a few of the particulars. By a small margin, voters say there aren't enough spending cuts and the energy tax is opposed 57 to 39. Mark, is the president going to be able to sell this program? Well, no, in very short order, Al. Let me just say this. He has created a sense of urgency, and that was, that was absolutely indispensable. Uh, there is a sense of urgency about the deficit, about the fact that we cannot accept the status quo any longer that we have to act. And I think that's important. And I, I, he is, to Clinton uh, did one thing. He ended the soap opera that's dominated this town for 12 years. The soap opera's been this, Al. A conservative president is criticized by a liberal Congress for submitting an unbalanced budget. The conservative president then censures the liberal democratic congress for passing the unbalanced budget that he submits. Clinton has done this accountability thing and that is going to I think go a long way. The third thing that cannot be ignored is the 64 freshman democrats. They were elected Al with an idea of changing things in the country. Not in Washington. This isn't sort of an oh, open procedure God, group of people. Oh. They were elected like Clinton and they're there for change and they are really it's bubbling up from below. I've been reading your columns this week has been a shift in tone. You still think it's a substantive disaster but whereas two weeks ago you said it would be a political disaster now you're saying no, well he may be no. able to pull the wool over. There's really been no, a shift. No, Why? I'm saying the time is running against the president. You say well no in short order. You know this is not the New Jersey legislature where Jim Florio can come in and rush through no. a big tax increase. It's a long process. George, I think you're at your peak of public support for this bill right now, for this program right now, and people don't even know what's in, what's in the program, but as it's going to work and people are going to look at it closely, so you can't get the president, who is a magnificent politician and a great campaigner, you can't get him out there and say, vote for this bill, vote for this program, as he said, vote for me, because as, as Ross Perot said, the devil is in the details. What are the details there? But Mona, people are willing to make sacrifices. Poll after poll shows that, focus group shows it, you talk to voters, they say it, as long as we have something different. Well, it's a con job because the notion that this represents change, that this is a great departure from the status quo, that the federal government will tax more and have more huge federal spending programs, that this is some kind of new departure, is really a joke. Uh, the fact is that, that Bill Clinton's agenda here, as I see it, is not to reinvent government, as he said during the campaign, but to re-legitimize government and have us all turn to Washington more and more, and especially he wants the middle class to depend on government. Well, what George. you see here is neither one of the Republicans want to get into the details because they know that the American people want the kind of changes the president has called for. You call a government, the president says, head start. Give every kid a chance to, to go to school it healthy. It doesn't work. And, well, it's, it's been the most successful government program of the last That's generation. Not much. And it saves money over the long run. Childhood immunization saves $10 for every dollar you invest in it. Yeah. On top of that, he's got real spending cuts. And as far as the energy tax goes, nobody likes taxes. But you're talking about $10 to $15 a month for an average family earning $40 to $50,000 a year. People are ready for big changes. They're ready for the kinds of investments they're calling for and the benefits they're going to get for the small contributions that are See, being that, asked that's for. the bet we're going to make is whether you can sell change to the people on a program as you did on a presidential campaign when the alternative was George Bush. I think it's going to be a lot harder. But right now, there is no alternative. The president's the only game in town. He's gone out there with a bold that will plan be that reduces so. his deficit. We haven't seen one yet, we'll get to and that's what the debate will be about. Just, let me just raise one kind of dissenting point here, Al, and I think that the deficit has become the metaphor for failed federal government. And there's no question about it that Americans believe until that deficit, that swelling, swollen deficit can be controlled, they're not going to believe other programs either. And I, I really think that that is the crucial and critical part and element. If, if I were Bill Clinton and the Democrats, what I'd do is I'd take all that money and collect and increase taxes and put it in a separate segregated account only for deficit. But then, well, I, wanna, I wanna say, I agree, I don't know work. what's gonna happen subsequently, but I think politically, this is not only a winner, but I think it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, have, la it's gonna have lasting power too. Well, you Next go on Capital Gang, I'll bet you on that one. Next on Capital Gang, the Republicans say no. joy of driving become a casualty of the times. Introducing 200 turbocharged horses. Uncanny grace. And one of the safest cars Saab has ever built. The new 9000 CSE. A car you can drive hard with your conscience intact. If you're printing to the LPT-1, Try printing to the LPT-1C. 
colon backslash windows. Backslash. The device command in this example sets up the H I M. Oops. What? what did I do? I don't know. What did you guys do it? You've been fooling with that thing for three days now. Making it easy to use. So we'll be more productive. If it's productive much longer, we'll go out of business. If you want a computer that's easy to use, there's still only one way to go. talking about the new New Yorker. Filled with brilliant color, innovative features, and star-studded contributors, it means that the best magazine in the world, probably the best magazine that ever was, hasn't just changed, it's gotten even better. Get 50 issues of the new New Yorker for just $18. Save $79.50 off the cover price. And get this cartoon collection free with your paid subscription. Call 1-800-257-1257. Welcome back. The Republican response to the Clinton plan was unified and negative. The American people would do well to remember, when you hear a Democrat call for taxes, do not ask for whom the tax rises. It will rise for you. My best estimate is that this is 63 cents in cuts and one dollar in new taxes. I've got to believe that this package is going to be in trouble because it's, it's too overloaded with taxes. Mona, has Bill Clinton brought the Republicans together? Absolutely. This is a godsend. Uh, look, during the days of George Bush, uh, Republicans were in a real bind because George Bush tried to um, uh, just muddle the differences between the parties. It was go, go in a back room, make a deal with the Democrats. There was no distinction between the parties when Bush was in charge. Now, finally, the Republicans can get back their natural message, which is to be for limiting government, reducing the size and the scope of the power of the federal government in our lives. George, do you expect Republicans going to have a plan? All that boils down to two words, doing nothing. And that's the Republican plan right now. I mean, the, the best response from the Republicans all week was Trent Lott. He gets up and grandly says, I have cuts, it's, they're right here in my pocket. He pulls them out, can we see them? Oh, no, no, puts them back in his pocket. The Republicans don't have a plan. They may be unified, but they don't know where they're going. So all they can do is be apostles of the status quo, say we're staying put, we're not gonna do anything. And the American people are gonna rebel against people, obstructionism. But for all this unity, will the, will the, we, will the GOP say, <coughs> A, the deficit doesn't matter, and so therefore, not to worry about. It. Or B, will they find spending cuts to match the tax increase? Well, they don't first like? place, I mean, Senator, Senator Lott is not going to give his spending cut detail until he finds the, ex the exact. Until he finds them. No, 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 no. Until he finds what you have proposed in detail, not just a bunch of line items, but actually what is going to be there. That's and, and that's only that's, that's only smart. Question. I would I would say, however, that the real opportunity for the Republicans is not on the spending side; it's on the tax side, because what is needed. And what some people in your administration privately admit is needed is a cut in the capital gains tax. And the reason that you won't have this cut is you're practicing the politics of envy. With all these rich people in the cabinet, it's amazing that they worry about fairness. They, if they're worried about fairness, they can contribute themselves to, to the Treasury. Some people don't there is just a capital gains cut in plan, Bob. Oh, it's so puny, though. I There's mean, also a huge capital gains differential, the biggest we've had in a long time. It sort of worries me. The 4,712th time Bob Novak has called for cutting the capital gains tax, <laughs> which uh, really wins him the, uh, leaving the landing lights on for Amelia Earhart Award for 1993. You don't understand it. Now, I, I have to say this, uh, quite frankly, that uh, the Republicans uh, have really run out of gas on their <gasps> supply side for them. There's no doubt about it. There isn't. There is not. A, there, uh -huh. what, did, what did it give us? It gave us, it gave us swelling deficits. It gave us a disparity in income. It gave, us, it, gave us manufacturing, it gave us manufacturing jobs lost and low, not good paying service jobs replacing them. And it has not. It has not made America stronger. We are not. Every American beginning work Monday morning, 21 years old, faces $90,000 in increased federal taxes because of the payments on the debt. But George, that's, that's, what it's, that's what it's facing over a lifetime. George, give us a sense how you think this is going to play out in the next uh, in the next month, uh, both with what you think you all will do and what you anticipate the Republicans are going to do. Well, we're going to do what we've done for the last week. We're going to continue to go out and sell the plan across the country. At the same time, we're going to work with the Congress.
get a budget resolution passed quickly through the House, and all I see from the Republicans is more whining. You're the longer they do are that, you receptive to spending cuts? No question have? about it. The president has said it. He said it in St. Louis. He said it in Chillicothe. Without, you more do you spending think you cuts, can get I'll more spending cuts through, through the, uh, the Democratic caucus? Absolutely. Fair? I think we will. I think Mark's right about the freshmen uh, in the House. They're ready for more spending oh, they're cuts. Already, they're ready they're already screaming about pork. You've got Steny Hoyer, a member of the House Democratic Leadership, says you can't have a cap on the pay of the civil service. Wait, wait, wait. wait. No, 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 no. In the sense of accuracy, I'm going to quote because I saw him last night. He said he's against that, but he'll vote for the package even with that in but, it. Bob. But all, Bob, all, that's these, what he said. all these people are making the complaints. And I, I want to get back to the Republicans a minute. Because you, you've been predicting the splitting of the Republican Party ever since we had dinner in 1984 in, in Dallas. You remember that? You said the Republican Party is going to split apart. I will tell you this, the great George Stephanopoulos and, and James Carville and Bill Clinton, President Clinton, are the greatest unifying force for the Republican Party I have seen because what they are unifying on is more government, more big government, more liberal programs, and more high George, taxes. What's George, George, in the Republican Party. George, when do you think this package will pass the Congress? I think that we're going to go. We're going to go quickly. We'll have a budget resolution passed inside of a month, and I think we'll have the final package passed uh, this summer. I hope. With or without the health care, will, will health care be part of it? Will that be said? We're going to have the, the report on health care due around May first. No, okay. No, George, no, I'm, sorry, we're, I'm sorry, we're out of time. George, I want to thank you for being with thank us. Thank you. Good to be. Here. And I hope you'll you'll come back because this will be a, a saga throughout the year. The gang will be back with the outrage of the week. and wives. They are our friends and partners, our strength and conscience. They guide us, nurture us, and protect us. They give us hope, they give us life. But there's a fact of every woman's life that we must all face up to. One out of every nine will be stricken with breast cancer. That's why GE created its new Cinegraph technology. It can make mammography faster, more comfortable, and more accurate. And by helping doctors detect tumors earlier, the GE Cinegraph can help make a remarkable 91% cure rate possible so that all our grandmothers and granddaughters, best friends and good neighbors, may live happier, healthier, and longer lives. Grand Central got a million thirty seven thousand five hundred copies. Of Ginny Bo's copier is still working. How's that look? Identical. I have an audition this afternoon. Copies in my resume. Need a couple more copies. Of my music. A lot of people coming up making free copies, and the machine been turned like a kid. The flyer for my rap band, Too Slim to Be Lost. What are you doing now? Always need lots of copies of the resume. Just kick the thing. And the Bias Laboratory Pick of the Year just keeps on making free copies after copy after copy. This country has what it takes to compete in tough, demanding world markets. Stop by one of our hometowns. No matter where you live or close by, over 2 million people in 50 states helping make the Boeing Company America's largest exporter. And now the outrage of the week. Bill Clinton talks a lot about reinventing government, doing more with fewer people, really reforming the way government works. Yet on Friday, the president nominated Phil Later to be Deputy Director of Management for OMB. Mr. Later's chief qualification seems to be that he threw the annual Renaissance Retreat Bash at Hilton Head, which the Clintons have enjoyed for years. I'm all for nice retreats, even for the earnest baby boomers that show up at the Renaissance New Year's weekend. But I question rewarding festivity maestros with the top management job in government. Congressman Harold Ford, who is black, is trying to dismiss a nearly all-white jury in his bank fraud trial in Tennessee. This week, the Justice Department supported Ford, <coughs> leaving the federal prosecutor in Memphis high and dry. Ford deserves a fair jury, but has the Justice Department joined that effort because he and the Congressional Black Caucus are politically important to Bill Clinton? Is this Clinton justice? Hmm. While President Clinton talks of sacrifice and demands greater contributions from taxpayers, he's building a new $30,000 jogging track on the White House grounds. Sure, they say they're using private contributions, not taxpayer contributions, to fund this extravagance, but if this is evidence of White House belt tightening, it's pretty unpersuasive. 
Al, alone of the nation's political leaders, Jesse Jackson had the time and compassion to go to Hamlet, North Carolina to comfort families after poultry workers there were burned to death. For that, he deserved praise. Today, Jesse Jackson deserves our censure for his irresponsible suggestion that Washington, D.C. residents, of whom I am one, consider withholding our federal taxes if President Clinton fails to push for statehood for the District of Columbia. As the perceptive Nat Hentoff wrote today, Jesse Jackson is truly spreading himself too thin. You, know, you want to say other about the bond market Republicans? <laughs> hey, I, I want to just say that the bond market, I, I know you don't understand this, is uh, the receptacles of established wealth. They want... They aren't interested in growth. They're just mm -hmm. interested in stand-patism. When the stock market loses 70 points in a week, that's the time to be worried, and that's the indicator to watch. Came back on Friday, though. Didn't it go up on Friday? 70 points in the week. Okay. Well, Bob Novak, once again, Just had Washington the, Week in Review. Had the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the final word. <laughs> this is a political show. This is Al Hunt saying goodnight for the Capitol gang. <laughs> <laughs> For a transcript, send $5 to Journal Graphic, 1535 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203. I'm Joe Oliver at CNN Center in Atlanta. Sports Saturday coming up in just a few minutes. Bob Lorenz joins us with a preview. Bob? All right, thanks, Joe. It's All-Star Weekend. We'll head to Salt Lake City for a report on the Saturday skills contest, plus a profile of the new blood in this year's game and a one-on-one -on -one with Charles Barkley. The college game features a cat and dog fight, payback for Georgia Tech, and Minnesota caught in the web. All this plus the Marlins' first day on the job and our Amateur Athletes of the Week. Nancy Newman and I will have it all for you in just a couple minutes. Joe? Thank you, Bob. President Clinton continues the sales pitch for his economic program today, taking his message to tomorrow's taxpayers. In a televised forum at the White House, Mr. Clinton answered questions from youngsters. He told them his priorities are jobs, education, and health care, and that he's considering airdrops of food into Bosnia-Herzegovina. Economic hardship may have prompted a man to hijack a Russian jetliner today. The hijacker surrendered in Stockholm. His wife and infant son were also on board the Aeroflot jet. The woman was quoted saying her husband couldn't find work back home in Azerbaijan. The plane was headed from western Siberia to St. Petersburg. It refueled in Estonia. The hijacker wanted to be flown to New York. I'm Joe Oliver. Sports Sat Saturday is just ahead as CNN Weekend continues. If the president and the national command, any nation, say ballistic missiles coming in, ready? I am prepared to carry out any order to launch these missiles. Duck and cover. That is the end of the world. Submarines, Sharks of Steel, a four-part world premiere series, Friday at 10 Eastern and Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. I must be the greatest. Right. I took up the world. As long as they keep making history, we'll keep writing their biographies. Peter Graves hosts the landmark television series, Biography, the stories of extraordinary lives. Tuesday, only on A&E. This is CNN. This is a presentation of CNN Sports. CNN Sports 
Sports Saturday, we'll meet some of the new faces gracing the site of All-Star Weekend. And Charles Barkley has a thing or ten to share about the game and life itself. The college game is raining cats and dogs in Lexington. Big Mac helps Georgia Tech answer its wake-up call. Kansas hooks up with its state mate, and UMass goes on the road. Island. The champ hits South Africa with some goodwill. The fish begin swimming in their new tank. Plus, we'll give you a face full of Saturday matinee hockey. And welcome to another edition of CNN Sports Saturday. She's Nancy Newman. I'm Bob Lorenz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you didn't want to reveal that, did you? Well, at least my name did come across the bottom of the screen. <laughs> I'm Nancy Newman. That's a good thing. You know, the uh, other exciting thing about this Saturday, besides her actually revealing her name, is the fact that it's overshadowed the top 25 action. There was a lot of good stuff today, but it's overshadowed by the All-Star game. If you notice, by the way, the NBA is off but it is highlighting its big day, the game tomorrow. But of course, tonight we have the Legends game, the Skills Contest, the three-point game. Craig Hodges, in fact, the defending champ, doesn't even play for an NBA team, but he gets a shot at defending his title. Yep, he's there. He's wearing an all-star uniform, all dressed, all nice, but no team. That's okay. <laughs> You've got a title to defend, it, and he's going to do that. Thanks, right. Rob. The 43rd annual NBA All-Star game tomorrow evening goes tomorrow evening, but there's a whole lot of fun to talk about before we get to that. Today is for the fans, as the stars put on a show at Salt Lake. Here to set the scene with a look from behind the scenes are Fred Hickman and Vince Cellini. Thank you and welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah. We are standing here, Vince and I, at the Media Center, which is right across the street from where all of the action will be later on tonight, the All-Star Saturday Festival. Over at the Salt Palace, we were there this afternoon, and on our way just from the Salt Palace and across the street to our hotel, we were hit with some serious Utah winter. Blizzard-like conditions, high winds, and snow that came at you like buckshot, I'm telling you. Yeah, we were yelling mush, mush on the way across <laughs> the street. But that didn't stop, of course, the two teams from practicing this morning, the East and the West squads at the Salt Palace. Uh, they got in a good workout, and guess who showed up today? Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen of the Chicago Bulls, who missed the mandatory media session yesterday, and both gentlemen will be fined a pretty healthy amount today. Right, both participated in workouts for both the East and West squad, about 40 minutes each. You were very, very light. But the media talks...